Mixing a 360 piece of audio can be difficult enough, but adding 360 video to the equation can make it even harder. On top of this, there are many different ways to achieve it, which makes it all really confusing. So today I'm gonna to show you the most straightforward way of doing this, and it will involve Adobe Premiere Pro. The first step will be to convert from your raw A format audio from the NTSF1 to B format. This can be done within Reaper using Soundfield by Rode plugin. All you have to do is check the input is NTSF1 and the output is B format Ambi X. Let's go up here to render. We'll change the name of the recording. 48K is good, four channels good. And we'll render that one file out. So once we've rendered out the four channel B format audio, we just need to open up Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's open that up here. We've named that project NTSF1 Jazz Recording. So we'll just need to go into Preferences, down to Timeline, and then change where it says Multi-Channel Mono Media. Instead of Use File, we're gonna change that to Adaptive. Hit OK, and you can now import both of our video and our audio into Adobe Premiere Pro. So we'll do that by going to File, Import, and we have our audio and our video here. We'll hit import and they appear in our media bin here. Now what we can do is right click on our video clip here, come on down to new sequence from clip. This will automatically create a new sequence that will match your 360 video resolution. So you'll see if I expand this audio track out here, that's gonna be our reference track that we'll use to synchronize all the audio later on. Now we'll just need to drag and drop our B format audio from the Reaper plugin onto our timeline. If I expand that out, you can see that that has four channels of audio on it, so you know it's correct. Now what we can do is highlight both audio tracks, right click, come on through to synchronize, go down to audio and select mix down. Hit OK and you should see that the NTSF1 audio has synchronized with the camera audio. If your audio didn't synchronize, what you can do is zoom into your waveform here and try and find a clap or some kind of visual cue that you can synchronize with. So now that that's been synchronized, we can mute the camera audio. So let's just adjust the, the top and the tail. So we'll make sure it starts and stops in the spot that we really want it to. And now once we've done that and we're happy with where it starts and ends, we can go to our export settings. To do this, come up to file, then export and go to media. Now we can change our format to H.264. For this next step, you'll need to find out the lens configuration of your 360 camera. In our case, we use the GoPro Fusion, which generates monoscopic footage. So what we can actually do is jump into preset here, come on down to VR monoscopic match source ambisonics. In the audio tab, your sample rate should be 48K, which is fine. We'll scroll down here and we'll see channels needs to be set to four. And right down the bottom here, we have a small section called Ambisonics and we'll need to make sure that audio is Ambisonics is selected. Now you can click export and wait for the rendered MP4. From here, this file can be dragged and dropped into YouTube or Facebook. A good thing to keep in mind is that the YouTube servers can take a while to process 360 audio. So while you may have already uploaded it, you probably won't be able to hear the full 360 experience up to six hours after uploading. Another thing to note is that Safari does not support 360 audio. So if you're gonna be testing it at home, we'd recommend to use a different browser. And there you have it, the full 360 workflow, from rigging up your NTSF1 to delivering a fully immersive video production. I hope you found this video series useful. If you've got any questions at all, just pop them down in the comments section below and we'll try to answer as many as we can.